an intro, this is not going to be your typical presentation. Uh, you'll see a couple of things that I'm sure very few might have seen before here in the audience. You'll also see a couple of uh, blue links uh, in the slides, which uh, is the source of the information that I'm, I'm going to be sharing. You don't need to take note of those uh, FYI links, those blue links, because at the end, you will find them in my own uh, FYI link at the end of the presentation. Okay. So, we don't have much time. I just want to briefly cover the, the concepts and the elements that are required uh, if you want to exit big and fast. So the number one thing is a decision. Uh, you have to be very clear of what kind of outcome you, you expect from your startup, the reason you're building it, and you have to make a decision that you will obtain that outcome. So my favorite entrepreneur is Elon Musk, and he comes from a family that has a tradition of uh, uh, a big passion for exotic cars. After he sold his first company, Zip2, for $400 million in cash, I think he had about 8% of that company, he um, finally told the, the real reason why he was building that company. There are 62 McLarens in the world, and I will own one of them. So that's the kind of decisiveness you need. Okay, uh, element number two is you need the right team and the right vision. So, a lot, there's a lot of talk about uh, domain expertise, and I believe that's important, right? If you, if you, depending on your background, you want to be in an area you're comfortable with. But, in my opinion, it's far more important to have the right personality traits. So, number one, ambition. You have to think big. And, uh, wit, which is a word that I coined uh, a while back. Um, I think it's more, it's far stronger than just grit, which is something that we hear a lot. Courage and perseverance, because wit is mental sharpness and inventiveness. So, if you're building a team, focus on personality traits first, domain expertise second. So, once again, Elon Musk, uh, talking about his vision for a company that later became uh, known as PayPal. This is back in 1999, he said, this is an ATM. And what we're going to do is transform the traditional, traditional banking industry. I do not fit the picture of a banker. Okay, let's talk a little bit about exit strategy. Um, like you mentioned earlier, right? A lot, it's very few entrepreneurs start their business thinking about an exit strategy. Uh, I know that because I did not start my first company with an exit strategy. I just wanted to take a hobby, make it into a business, and earn some income. But uh, once you decide that the exit strategy will guide you to obtaining the decision that you made back in the beginning, you'll, you'll see the value of that and you'll see that on a slide later. So this again is Elon Musk and how he, uh, how he looks at entrepreneurship. Right? I'd say the real payoff is the sense of satisfaction in having created the company that I sold. Once again, Elon Musk has no problem in selling his company. He sold uh, Zip2, he sold PayPal. My bet is, given the competition and what he's managed, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he exits uh, Tesla soon and focuses on his real passion, which is space exploration. Okay, leverage and enriching user experience. We all know Steve Jobs. Uh, what some may not know is that he did not invent the MP3 player, he did not invent the smartphone, he did not invent the tablet. But he was very clever on leveraging on existing technologies and enriching the user experience. I don't know if some of you had the, the Palm Pilot. If we had an image on the Palm Pilot and we wanted to zoom, we had to take out the stylus. It was like a zoom button with a plus sign, and we just had to tap that button a couple of times, right? So basically, what Steve, his uh, genius is uh, not inventing something new, but just why not put two fingers on the screen and that's it. Okay. Um, this is another guy I like a lot. Tom Marco is uh, uh, one of the founders of a company called Viber. Viber exited for about nine hundred million dollars, uh, was acquired by Rakuten, and that was within four years. So. Uh, yeah, almost a billion dollars in less than four years, to me, is uh, amazing. 
So let's see, let's see his secret, right? Remember that um, Skype was around for a long time, lots of other different type of uh, voice over IP providers. So what did he do? Sure, there are numerous players in the market, but it helps you narrow down if you look at the features that they offer. It is a competition among the R&D departments as each of these companies come out with, with features that enrich user experience. So a pro tip here is if you want to exit fast, some, find something that someone is doing, maybe it takes them three hours and 30 clicks. If you can make it into three minutes and three clicks, you're good. Okay, growth hacking. This is where the wit will come in very handy. Um, it's not about money, it's not about uh, having large marketing budgets, but it's about finding clever ways to, um, there's a term for it, it's called seeding engagement. You seed the engagement of the product or service you're selling yourself. So let's take a look at that. Um, when PayPal, this is, this is brilliant. I, I don't know who exactly did it. I'm guessing it must have been Elon Musk, but he's the, the really witty guy. Okay, when PayPal figured that eBay was their key distribution platform, so if you're in a, in a startup, you need to ask yourself, what is my key distribution platform? This is what they did. They came up with an ingenious plan to stimulate demand. They created a bot that bought goods on eBay and then insisted on paying for it using PayPal. So that to me is brilliant. The full article is in that uh, blue FYI link there. Like I said, you'll find it on, a, on another link. Okay, this is something that is very overseen by, by a lot of entrepreneurs. Uh, people don't realize the, what the value there is in having proper mentors, proper advisors. Um, there's, a, there's a saying, right? Uh, it goes something like this. There's a difference between knowing the path and walking the path uh, by Morpheus. Uh, so if you, if you want an advisor, I would uh, suggest uh, finding someone that has walked the path. Okay, one of the biggest mistakes CEOs make when selling their business is underestimating the value that a seasoned and qualified m and advisor can bring to a transaction. Just to put it simple, if the, the, the current Rodrigo Martinez could go back in time to 1999, when uh, I sold my first company at the age of 26. If I could advise myself back then, I could have added at least another 20 or 30% uh, value to the deal, which would have made the cost of the m and advisors their uh, peanuts. Okay. This is very important. There's a lot of misunderstanding about passion. So I'm gonna try to help you guys uh, with a limited time. Um, if you don't have both, you're gonna need a lot of luck, all for luck. I embrace luck, I receive it, but um, consider focus. The secret of genius is focus. If you can laser your attention on any subject or project, it will reveal its blueprint to you. Alan Cohen, in his book, Why Your Life Sucks. So, the thing is that uh, a lot of people don't ask themselves the right questions. So if you're in a startup, you need to, like Frank, I just mentioned the question back a couple minutes ago, right? What is my key distribution channel? Where are my users? If you start asking yourself with that very ambitious brainstorming, with that ambitious team, the big thinkers, the clever, witty co-founders, if you start asking yourself the right questions based on my experience, eventually the answers kind of drop down. Okay, passion. Um, a lot of what I see about passion out there is Basically, uh, things you're emotionally attached to, maybe hobbies or something that kind of excites you. I, I look at passion uh, as an energy, as something to fuel you to where you want to uh, arrive, right, your destination. So uh, be careful with following your passion, right? I have a passion for the violin, but honestly, if I follow the violin, uh, but given my uh, current uh, status of a uh, violin player, I, I wouldn't be successful. So I'd rather uh, sell a company first and then hire a private tutor to help me uh, achieve my value goals. Passion is energy, feel the power that comes from focusing on what excites you. Oprah Winfrey. 
Okay, I got ahead of myself. Um, here's a pro tip. Instead of following your passion, I'm not saying tear your passion apart. Just say, leave it aside, put it in a drawer. Uh, have a passion for success, follow your strengths, identify what you're good at. Uh, get together with other people that are also good at that uh, skill or complementary skills. Go and build, go do like Elon Musk, go and build, sell a company. Buy your McLaren or whatever your goal is. I don't judge anyone. Everyone is free to their own uh, dreams and uh, as long as it's legal, of course, right? Okay. So, normally when I, when I do my presentations, I, uh, given all the, all the noise out there, there's a lot of skepticism, uh, especially with the whole passion thing and, and innovation. So, in case anyone is still skeptical, this is a press release of uh, when I sold my first company. Uh, it changed my life. Basically, it, it taught me a very important lesson. And that really helped me with my second company. It taught me that if I wanted a reward, something for myself, that was only going to happen if I first created value for someone else. So the more I wanted something for myself, the harder I would fight to create value for someone else. And what I learned is that if you have an exit strategy, you're actually creating value simultaneously for two entities. You're creating value for your end user, your customer, your, the person using your, your uh, air sensor, great air sensor, I like it a lot. So you're creating value for the, the person that's buying it, but you also need to consider what kind of value are you creating for your possible pool of acquirers, the companies that could later on buy that uh, startup, who are they? What, is they, what is their goal plan, what, do, what are they looking into, where do they want to expand, and, it's about building a company to fill a white space rather than building something for your own uh, whatever desires or pleasures. So that's the lesson I learned. When I sold that company, I made a decision. I said I want to build and sell an even bigger company, but with less investment in time and money. My first company, like I said, was not been built to be sold. Thus, when I talk about that m and deal, I say it, my first company was acquired. Okay. There's a difference between getting acquired and selling your company. Good companies are actually sold rather than bought. Um, but seven years was just too much for me. There was so much pain in there. I said I want to do it again, but I don't. I don't I'm not. I don't want pain or I want to minimize it, right? So again, ask yourself the right questions. What kind of company would buy my uh, air sensor? What are the big players in the air sensor space? Is there a fight? between these uh, big Chinese corporations that are into manufacturing. Uh, maybe if I create a weapon, any one of the fighters will want to buy my weapon so they can right, uh, win the battle. So sometimes it's about understanding your, 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 um, what you can afford to do and what you cannot afford to do. Right? If you can afford to go all the way A, B, C, D, E, F. I heard something about uh, Snapchat raising a Series F round at a $1.8 billion uh, round at a $20 billion valuation. If you can afford to do that, great, go for it, good luck. Um, okay, we made a decision, we identified the opportunity, there was a competition amongst the portals in Brazil to, be, to see who was, who was, who was gonna be number one. Um, we, we realized that we could leverage on an existing model which was the web hosting model, but we had to improve the experience. So one simple enriching user experience was why people, I don't know, probably, I see maybe, well, okay, nobody in the audience should remember GeoCities. You guys are just too young to remember GeoCities. But, uh, yeah, I, I remember GeoCities. But anyway, when GeoCities was around, if you wanted to have a web presence, you had this very ugly URL. We said, we just said, why, why do you have to go this way? Why not go that way, right? We changed the URL, made it to something simple, appealing, something that everybody wanted to use on their business cards. It uh, just exploded, and this is what happened. Oh, yeah, sorry. I talked about growth hacking, right? What's, what's your key distribution channel? You gotta find that key distribution channel, of course. 
The, the word there is key, there, there might be a couple of others, but for HPG, uh, which was a free web hosting service, there was a tool, which I'm sure nobody here heard of, it's called, uh, called QFTP. Basically, the webmasters were using this, using this software to upload their, their web pages onto the other sites that they were using to, to host these uh, web pages. And QFTP had a little banner there that you could advertise. So we advertised in that banner there. Simple, uh, unlimited hosting, unlimited space, www.h.yourname.hpg.com.br. We spent like 10,000, with $10,000 per month, for a few months to see engagement through a key distribution channel, we created what you will see uh, in a bit. Okay, so growth hack. You have to be clever to find your key distribution channel. So we launched in September 2000. These are, these are two web, uh, web 1.0 companies. We launched, we were number nine in September 2000 in the internet audience ranking. November, we were number eight. January, we were number seven. March, we were to, uh, number six. In May, we were already number four with a reach of around 36% of the Brazilian internet. Uh, that would be something like uh, 25 million internet users today with today's uh, numbers. And in June 2001, we became Brazil's third largest internet portal without advertising, just uh, using growth hacking. And uh, the inevitable happened. As we had uh, strategized, we sold the company to a bigger player. Uh, the valuation was three, three times bigger than the first company that I sold. Remember, that was an accidental exit. I had not planned for it. I just built something with so much passion that it became attractive. attractive. We were bought. This company was uh, strategized, was built to be sold. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, Elon Musk has sold Zip2. I sold PayPal, probably selling Tesla soon. And this is the billion dollar question, okay? This is a question that, I don't know if some of you guys know Bernard Leon. He's one of the important people at the startup ecosystem in Singapore. He asked the, he asked the question, right? So what should you do as an entrepreneur? Should you start something without an exit strategy? Basically, you know, create a company with a vision, and uh, just see where it goes, reach it, without really understanding what the end goal is? Or should you build a company with an exit strategy, which basically is reverse engineer the process, start backwards, find, find the M&A activity, find the pool of acquirers, understand uh, their uh, strategy, how you can complement it, how you can fill a white space, work backwards and then decide what kind of company you want to build. Well, in my, in, in, based on my experience, obviously, I choose uh, number two. That's the link I was mentioning. Uh, just, uh, you can put it in any browser. You'll find me happy to connect with you guys on, on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and all those other links that uh, I had in the beginning of the presentation, you can, you'll, you'll find them uh, in there too. Thank you.